welcome to the ninth Girls on Games podcast. Thank you very much for showing up this evening. It's a Sunday night. And guess what? We've got wine. Right, Kat? Oh, God, yes. Here, red wine. <laughs> Cheers to everybody in chat. Thank you very much all day, for coming. Day. <laughs> Thank you very much for showing up this evening. A little bit uh, ahead of our usual schedule, because Catherine, Esty, and I are busy the tomorrow evening with an event. Gonna go see the Apple Man talk. You know, Steve Wozniak, that kind of thing. That's pretty nice. cool. So, yeah, we're super stoked that about cool. that. But we're also super stoked about what's going on here tonight, because I've got a wonderful cast of characters. Starting off with my second half, Catherine smith Bien. Catherine, how are you doing? I'm good. <laughs> We've got Catherine Ashley. What's up? We've got the wonderful technician, Simo. Hello. I unmuted. See? See? You can hear me now. I unmuted my microphone. <laughs> okay, you can, you can well done. Well done. Yay. I'm super and, excited. And special guest tonight, we have Becky, also known as Snooze. Wonderful. Hey. Yay. And Becky the Hype. Wicked, <laughs> our wonderful, wonderful Devin, who couldn't be here with us this evening, wrote an amazing Twitch and shout about Becky because we love her Twitch channel very, very much. <laughs> and she's a local Montrealer. So welcome, Becky. Yeah, thank you. It's awesome. So, really yeah. Um, thank you all for joining us on this different night. Also, I know that the SNL 40 year thing is going on. So really, thank you for showing up. <laughs> but we're not going to talk about comedy or TV. We're going to talk about video games. So, are you guys all hungover on chocolate? Because yesterday was Valentine's oh, Day. Geez. Everything's cheap today. I went, I went this morning at 1030 to go get discounted chocolate. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Very nice. Yeah. Uh -huh. Is there any left in the stores or is like all gone? Oh, it was actually, there was pretty much, was, what's Carnaby? There's all this Carnaby chocolate now. So is that one with all the like, little like stuff in it? Like the no, no, it just started popping out of everywhere. Carnaby. I don't even know what the hell Carnaby, Carnaby is. How is either. What the fuck are you talking I know about? Mint. Carnaby chocolate. <laughs> I got Laura Seacord. I know that. Carnaby? Oh, I went to Farmer Place. Carnaby. C-A-R. I've never heard of that before. Yeah, exactly. Never heard of that. No idea what that is. Right, there you go. <laughs> Anyways, I want to know, first off the bat, what is your must-have gaming snack? If you're going to go sit for a long period of time, what's something you need to have next to you? I know Kat and I like wine. <laughs> yeah, but that's not a snack. <laughs> I that's not a with snack. Everything. A snack. What is your go-to thing to have when you game? Let's start with snooze. Oh, my God. Everyone knows this. Uh, uh, I, I like my, my JD and Coke. Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 20-year-old guy, but I, I like my JD and Coke on the rocks. Nothing wrong with that. Do you snack on anything while you're gaming? Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't snack that often because you know you hear it in the mic. Oh, no, that's true. Yeah, you a bit of pain in the butt, you know. Yeah, but if you're uh, home by yourself and you're not Twitch streaming, do you mean anything? Some jerky on stream. Some beef, beef jerky. Yeah. A farm girl, JD Coke, and some jerky. I mean, there you go. <laughs> uh, you go. A girl after my own heart. Cat SD, what do you snack on? Popcorn. Popcorn. I oh. am a popcorn feed. I bought a giant bag of caramel corn from Target. Yeah. And I, like, destroyed it in five sittings, I think. Like, it was literally, like, a family size. Mm. Five sittings is a generous amount of time. I think you could have <laughs> sped that up just a bit. Yeah, but at one point, it just, like, you know, it gets heavy. <laughs> but yeah, the but then, like... It's good, because it's not sticky. But the caramel corn's not yeah. so bad. It's buttery popcorn, you know, like movie popcorn. Exactly, you to, like, like you can't that, fucking that no, it doesn't work. I no yeah. ruin shit with that. Yeah. Yeah. I do. I do. I I found a way to play a good amount of Dragon Age while eating buttery popcorn. <laughs> no head, just down. dunk your head, or what is it? <laughs> no, no. As soon as the <laughs> cinematic started, I was just like, stuff your face. <laughs> this was, this was <laughs> my reaction when I triggered the sex scene for my romance. Was like, oh <laughs> good, I have. I can eat. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, it's funny because, like, now you, you don't even know, like, there's these lines. Like, you can't even tell the graphics are so good what's a cutscene and what's not and when you're going to get prompted to do something. So it always sucks when you're, like, grabbing a drink and then you, like, half spit it out and, like, reach for your manette as close as you can to, like, play. Oh, my. <laughs> That's very, that's very Montrealer, the manette. Yeah, sure. the manette. yeah, we say manette. I always call it, we always call it a manette. Yeah, for those who are in chat, who are not from here, we're in Quebec, so we yeah. flick languages back and forth all the time. It happens. That's just what we do. Um, how about you, Catherine Ashley? What do you drink? Or eat? my red wine. Yes. Uh, I eat anything, man. I don't know, my couch is literally in front of the, the fridge, so I just grab whatever the fuck's in it and get Legit. chips. Uh fries, pierogies. I've been making pierogies lately, so I yeah. eat that while I game, which is pretty gross, but... Whatever, you're hungry. I'm always hungry. 
that sounds great. Yeah, I eat anything. Just give it to me, I'll eat. Except for green peppers, I don't like green peppers. Or oh yeah, I don't like green peppers oh. either. They're not so in the good. same class as red, yellow, and orange. Ah, just eat them. Pick them ah. off. Oh, I pick them. I pick them right the fuck off. I just throw them against. I ruin my pizza because of it. <laughs> <laughs> Cat don't like green peppers. <laughs> How about you, Simo? What do you eat when you game? Um, I like Swedish berries. That's a good one. Oh, yeah, wow. it's kind of like my thing there. I try not to buy them too often because I can't stop myself. So I just like shove my face and then my teeth get all sticky. And then I can't taste anything for three days because I finished oh, the yeah. whole bag. But yeah, Swedish berries and just water. I'm, I'm Remember all that junk boring. food we had in Extra Life? Oh my oh, God. My God. Oh my God. This year because we had so much junk food. It oh. was ridiculous. People came downstairs and they're like, you're going to eat all that? And we're like, yeah, yeah we're here for And we fucking months. did. <laughs> we ate it. We ate. I, I regret <laughs> my McDonald's in the morning. Holy shit, oh, that's son. Bad. No way. Yeah, I really felt like it, but then like, as oh man, like an hour after I was like, fuck that. This is the worst idea ever. Yeah, the only thing I ate at the morning, the extra life stream, was a big whipped cream pie. So <laughs> whipped cream. Oh, oh. <laughs> wow. That's fun. That's, That's fun. Awesome. Sounds delicious. <laughs> right. the first time I ate a pizza a pizza pocket in like fucking fifteen years. Yes. <laughs> Holy shit. I, I love those. The <laughs> they were there, and I was like. You no. bought pizza pockets. Bring you back. I was like, this is why I haven't eaten this in 15 years. Do you remember, doesn't that bring you back to like getting home from school, grabbing a pizza pocket, going mm. right to your console and playing until your mom said, supper time. Yeah, yeah. except, you know, console, <laughs> replace console, but yeah. With a PC? Well, yeah. Oh, PC <laughs> for the house, master yeah, race. Yeah, that's right. Et cetera, so, et cetera. <laughs> thanks everybody for joining us in the chat. Don't forget, you can donate. The little button down below. We love you for it. And uh, fo don't forget to follow if you're new. Um, also, we'll be taking questions at the end of the show. So toss them in the chat. And uh, our lovely team of, uh, of operators, I guess you call them, our mods. We're going to be throwing it yeah, in mods. a dock for us so that we know what's going on. And we can answer your questions. And we love questions. We love it. So it was also just Valentine's Day. All right. If you could date. Someone in a video game. Mm. Oh my god. Date. Oh my god. Okay. All right. Beth, I know. Who would you date? Oh, uh, okay. My first video game crush ever was uh, Squall Leonhardt from Final Fantasy yes. VIII. <laughs> like his yes. gunblade. He was like so sexy. Gunblade. My first video game crush. The yeah. hair in the face, the scar. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I and don't just give like a the fuck attitude. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, fourteen-year-old heart just went. Yeah. Oh my god, with like the leather jacket, it was just yeah. so bad. And I hated the girl in that game because, yeah. well, I just hated her. Well, Renault was boring me. as fuck, yeah. anyways. But yeah, <laughs> Squall. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I, I would hit it honestly, and I'm straight man, so yeah, that tells you something. <laughs> All right, who else? Cat Ashley. Who would you date in a video? Yeah, well, game? other than Graf said Master Chief, which it's not Master Chief. You don't know what he looks like. Um, there's there's something freaky going on by having that whole suit. No, I don't know. Oh, well, <laughs> saw a glimpse and he kind of looks a bit older now. So he's a bit more on like the between 40 and 50. So no, I want to go for someone a bit uh, younger. Booker DeWitt probably would be my number one. Oh, yeah. uh, yes. What, uh, that's All from day, Bioshock, right? Day. Yes, Bioshock, Bioshock 2, right? Oh, Infinite, I mean, Infinite. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Booker. Booker and Blackwall. Simo, what about you? Ew, it's hard to say. I kind of like... Oh, jeez. I like Daisy. It's stupid, but I like Daisy. Daisy She's fucking from adorable. Mario? Yeah! The cute little brown hair flip. She's fucking adorable. Flip. She's so cute. I don't know. But I guess it's too, it's kind of too... It's too childish. I don't fucking know. No. That's a good chat question, though. Peach or Daisy, right? Daisy, 100%. Oh, that was Lena. Peach uh, is an insufferable bitch. I hate Peach. She's so annoying. Oh, my God. Yeah, Princess is another castle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm going to kill now. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I can't save myself. <laughs> Sorry. No. There's my yeah, blonde Daisy. girl for the moment. We'll, we'll put that away. <laughs> she can go over in a box. <laughs> Kat Esty, how about you? Who would you date? Oh, Lara Croft. Sorry. Lara Croft. She was my she was yeah she was my first like I I looked up pictures on the internet. That was yeah she it was, was my first. Was the one that tried to make her naked with the cheat? I no because that didn't exist. I tried. I fucking tried. No, there Trust was me. A big rumor about that. Yeah, yeah. like you go in the shower and then you fucking jump and then you do the yeah no I tried as but never. Yeah no. 
<laughs> All right, Cat SD, I cut you off. Uh, well, there was Squall. Yeah. But he got dethroned. Bye. Bye. It's so editorial. I knew you were going to oh, say <laughs> You'd like to do that, Ian. You'd like to do that. What about Mario? Mario. I don't know how you say uh, it. Nah, too short. Um, <laughs> but it's a close tie between <laughs> Assassin's Creed 2 Ezio or Assassin's Creed Brotherhood got a bit of a beard going on Ezio. Yeah. Oh, I love the, the older men look with the nice coiffed beard and a little bit of salt and pepper hair. Mm, fine. Yeah. yeah. Just yeah, puts you? on that hood and goes fuck shit up. Well, yes, that's like, right. Yes. Yes. Jump Ezio, climb Ezio. <laughs> After it, Holy shit! All right, cool. Woo! We just went I there. Guess it's getting toasty. We just went there. <laughs> well, it is Valentine's Day, so you know. Well, let's day see. after exactly, and you know, Fifty Shades yeah. of Grey came out, and so everybody's a little hot mm -hmm. and bothered. But um, mm -hmm. I okay, definitely go for. Chocolate. Yeah, I need a little bit of my Batman action. I'm sorry, I'm a little Aww. cliche, but I mean. The That's Dark Knight. Okay, so okay. Dark Knight will yeah. always be my dark, my night. Which which Batman? Oh. Mm. Oh, that's too hard. I don't think of them as different people. They're all the same men. And he has the suit. He no. wants the suit. <laughs> the suit with that gravelly voice. Yeah, I guess so. Mm -hmm. If I had another one to throw in, it would be Thane from Mass Effect. His voice was amazing. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. How about, what's the chat saying? Rosalina uh, is cute, come from 8-Bit. Uh, blonde or Lady Alley. Who else are they saying? I'm oh, trying to read this. Claire Claire from... Tell me from D.O.A. Fred? Stamps has a crush on Toadstool. <laughs> That's kind of awesome. Prince, well, depends. Uh, is, is it Game Princess Storm. Toadstool or is it Toad, the fucking I'm Toad? I'm not sure. <laughs> Game Storm says he dates Samus. Samus yes. is hot. Mm -hmm. Samus yeah. is hot. Once that suit yeah. came off. Yeah, yeah. she's hot. <laughs> what else we got here? Trying to read through the. It's going so darn quick. It's hard Miranda. to read. Uh, Craig said Miranda from Mass Effect yeah. Two. Oh, that is Mass Effect Two. Sorry. Sailor Moon. <laughs> that is. Nice. Isn't nice. um isn't Miranda from or uh, from like a real actress? No. Who is yeah, that? Yeah, it is. Mass it, it's based on. Oh my god, I, I can't remember the name, but it's based on a real actress, like the the face and all that. Yeah. Uh, what's her? It's very attractive in real life as isn't, well. Isn't so. it, oh, it's she plays in fucking Chuck. Um. Oh my god! Yes. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> IMDb. IMDb. If, Ivan yeah, yeah. Strahovski? I know who she is. Isn't it Ivan Strahovski or something like that? I think it's a sexy it's name. A sounds sexy like yeah, that. Yeah, okay. it's yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go. Nice. <laughs> Bayonetta? Yeah, well. Well, yeah, she's kind of a sex object. You can't get more of a sex object than her when you do a whole move and you like climb through her legs and get a crotch shot and it's like, whoa! Anyways. Hey, we got a... We got uh, well, Craig gave us another dollar, eleven dollars fifty cents. Thank you, Craig. Thank you very much, Craig. Oh, thanks, Thank Craig. you so much, man. Thank you very much. It. Fifty shades of gray money. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. We appreciate it. However, we will not be whipping each other. No, no, not this evening. This is this is you know PG thirteen chat. Maybe a little higher with our depending on our level of drinking and swearing. I'm swearing. Nobody can stop today. I'm not swearing a lot today. Yeah, poor I'm Catherine. She promised her daddy she wouldn't swear, but I'll make up for her because I'm a new fee and that's what we do. Um, with that being said, let's go on to another topic. Uh, next one, all right. How do you guys feel about game review scores? Lately, a lot of sites have actually been changing how they've been, you know, placing their value on numbers, stars, just comments. Um, Eurogamer and the defunct joystick uh, have switched earlier this year to change the, uh, the how they review scores um and of course metacritic is totally driven by other other site scores how do you guys feel about putting an actual number at the end of the score i know it's not something we do um do you appreciate it do you think it's detrimental how do you feel well having gone through a lot of school where a plus has meant four different things <laughs> throughout my career I start to like stop giving a lot of importance to numbers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I like to look at Metacritic, and you know, I I mostly I don't really look at the number. I more look like at the color, and if I'm interested in a game, and I will use the color to point out the like bad critics mm. to read what their what their opinion is more than yeah. the good ones. Yeah. Just in case, because like, you know, I want to know what makes something bad more than what makes something good. I don't know. I'm like that. But I don't really look at the number. 
And when I read uh, reviews, I'll often read the first part and then the last part to see if I really want to be interested in what's in the middle. Mm -hmm. It's I'm more about the blurb, honestly. You yeah, actually more read? about the blurb. Good yeah. For you. Yeah, just a lot like, of people don't read. They just run to the end, find the number, and they, they see go the bitch. score, scroll down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, yeah. I like how um, some review sites have they have the number, but then they'll have pros, cons, and then a like, blurb. Yeah, yeah like, like IGN. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, it, yeah. Like IGN. Kotaku is something like think. that, or is it Polygon? A lot of them started doing that, not just having the numbers, but having like a number and yeah. then a quick why this number, and. I look less at the number and more at the why. Mm. I've actually sense. been watching a lot of uh, IGN's video reviews, and though it's pretty much verbatim what they, they read their review, but for something about it, it's sometimes a little bit easier to take in because you have the context of the video of that interaction happening at the same time. They try their best to do that. It doesn't always happen. Um, but I like that, and they do show the good, the bad, the ugly, that kind of thing. Um, I know... Uh, Escapist magazine just changed to a five star system. Mm. Uh, how do you guys feel? Like that's more along the Give movie way of going. It's the same thing. It's the same. It's like giving A, B, C, D, exactly. or E. Yeah. It's the same thing. I mean, mm. triangle, square, circle. You know. I mean, yeah, but they give they give it exactly the same thing. They give explanations of what each what yeah. each value means and try to know. get it. But I don't know. I always get ticked off when I read reviews. I feel bad for the companies where they get their bonuses based on their Metacritic reviews. That's I don't horrible. think that's yeah. necessarily fair. That should be illegal. That. That's wrong. That's yeah. That should be illegal. So that should be based uh, on sales. Yeah, and except, especially since now everybody's changing it and trying to avoid giving things actual yeah. freaking numbers. A number. Well, look at Kotaku. They give a yes or no. And that honestly, yes or no, and they give why you should get it or why you shouldn't. And that's honestly perfect. If you want to just a good summation. Yes, you should get it or no, you should not get it. Mm. I mean, for me, that's better than a number because a m number is so abstract. Like, how do you define, like, what is a number? What makes a difference between a seven and an eight? You know what Especially I mean? Especially so when it's yes different no. types of games. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That as well. You know, and how, yeah. you know, maybe the person didn't like it for their own, like, obviously we try our best to review games yeah. based on, you know, like objective Criteria. findings and that kind of stuff. It's impossible. We don't oh. live in a vacuum, right? We exactly. know what else is going on. We hear other things. You know, internets break things. You know, that's that's all you can do, mm -hmm. and uh, and it's tough. It's tough to review a game and try to not put your own personal spin on it. We do because we know you guys like how we feel about things, and we try to stay positive. We try to be, you know, as uplifting and say, "Hey, well, this didn't work, but there might be mm -hmm. other redeeming qualities about the game." But you know, if shit's broken, we're gonna say it's broken, and that's it, right? That's the thing. Like with with think about when you go to buy a product on Amazon, right? I mean, they have the star rating, mm -hmm. but consumers nowadays, I mean, they're so much more active on social media and. Me being a Twitch streamer, like I strongly believe, you can go straight to the source. The right. game is out at midnight. Log on Twitch the day before. Exactly. Log on Twitch. Go mm. watch a streamer that you know that you can relate to. Actually, play the game you instead trust. of just reading a text. You trust. You get to know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't, I don't believe in numbers anymore. I mean, especially yeah. since there's a whole conspiracy now, how people can be like, like paid to give a biased opinion. That's very sketchy. But if you're watching someone play it live on Twitch or like GameFly. Uh, and game access, stuff like that, where you can rent the games, just try them out for like $5. Mm -hmm. I don't see the point to to relate on the number anymore. Yeah. It's meaningless to me now that you can watch it live. I guess that leads on the same thing, too, especially now that it's getting more and more difficult for us to be able to get reviews out prior to the games hit store shelves because of all the online interaction and stuff that it requires. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the crew. Anyways, um, <laughs> honestly, sorry, uh, but it's just the way it is. I mean, we try yeah. best, and as much as we like a game or whatever, like if we can't get the full experience, we can't tell you yes or no. Yeah. So I mean, that's the thing, and for sure, when you watch someone like play it live, I mean, it is very subjective. But if you know, if it's a streamer that you know, and like I said, that you can associate yourself to, mm -hmm. well, that's entirely different. I mean, that's what I get on my stream most of the time is people who go to the Xbox store. And you see the channels that are broadcasting. You're like, yeah. oh, I'll just check it out before I click yeah. on the buy button. It's right next to the game exactly. that you can yeah. buy. You, you can't know? get any more. You can't get a better experience prior to buying than Twitch. Straight yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, absolutely. It's not yeah. a trailer. It's not pre-recorded. Oh, yeah. It's not a professional person like that has been playing the game over and over and over again. Though some of them have been, but at least like they will tell you straight up because they have yeah. no, they have no, you know, like it doesn't, it doesn't phase them whether the game is good or not they're going to give you their honest opinion and mm -hmm. it's one of the greatest ways to review products 
I'm I mean, look at what just gets awesome. what gets us hyped for the game. It's E3, it's Gamescom, it's stuff like that where you get to see teasers. Yeah, mm-hmm. we get and we get, get to see the more developed game. Well, then you can decide even more for yourself. You're yeah. throwing your money at it. Mm. Yeah. One of the coolest things that I saw, um, and Cat and Cat were both at it with me, it was the IDGA uh, indie event that they had here, where uh, there's about 21 games shown, uh, all indie developers except for one. Yeah. One was Square Enix, and they got five minutes to show their game running in real time with someone playing, and. You know, that was actually really interesting was because brilliant. nothing was pre-recorded. Everybody everybody was really receptive in the audience mm-hmm. and was cheering and everything. And That's it was, awesome. It was, it was a really good experience. And I think actually a lot of big companies would probably have a better reaction doing those sorts of things than they will just having releasing trailers. But we'll see how that goes. I have, a, I, I have kind of a... Well, I miss the, 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 the review scores with different like criteria so for example you had story uh graphics um and sound yeah. or whatever so that you could score each section of the game that individually doesn't happen anymore it doesn't first i don't know why I or can't they, to do well, it. They, they don't score it uh, mm. per se like they talk about it in the review but they don't score it so i i kind of miss that i like that they they would put you know the depending on what's important for you then you could look it up and, and maybe have a quick view of what you like but yeah mm. one of my favorite review website is rock paper shotgun and they they never gave review and that uh, they never gave uh, numbers and it's always long winded reviews about what they like what they don't like what you can expect and whatnot so it's it's funny though because like the day a game comes out or the day that we know that embargo lifts the crew of us on GOG we we have a Facebook chat going and then we're all like oh my god this site gave it this much do you think that's right oh my god this other site did this and we have this ongoing diatribe back and forth talking about the, how a re- game reviewed and I mean it does you know, I mean, it's the same for movies. It's the same for cars. You know, it does get the conversation started. But yeah. uh, do you know? Does that change whether or not we purchase a game? Not really. I mean, it changes whether if a game is legitimately broken, like you can't play multiplayer online. Then yes. But if we're honestly interested in the game, we'll play it anyway. I know Cat Ashley played Thief, even though it didn't do great reviews, and she loved it. <laughs> so which it, which game? Thief. thief. Oh yeah, thief. Sorry. The reboot. Oh yeah, that thing. We keep going back to thief. <laughs> that thing. My that shame. Thing. <laughs> Tell people that. Yeah, like that. <laughs> I think All right. Games will always find their audience. Yeah, yeah. even they will. games. Yeah, there, there's a niche for everything. There really is. You just have to, to find what works for you. You know. Exactly. The developer. And hey, if you like playing something, all power to you. Exactly. Yeah. Play it. Yeah. Um. Let's talk about something that really, 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 really made Cat Ashley excited the other day. <laughs> Bethesda is going to have a press conference at <laughs> this year. Oh, so, Cat, tell us what your first reaction was. Oh, God, the minute- show us, show us what your first reaction was. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't even know. That might not be legal on sweating. Twitch. It was like sweating, and I was hyperventilating a bit. Then I was like, "Oh fuck!" I'm couldn't like, even type. Right? Fallout 4, and I'm sure, and I had this long conversation with um, with Graf in another chat, because he was like, no, Bethesda's doing their own thing at E3 this year, it's probably going to be, a, uh, to announce another uh, Elder Scroll, I'm like, absolutely not, they've never done that. No, it's always been part of, like, Xbox or PlayStation. Yeah, yeah. the bigger and ones. Mm-hmm. Fallout 4 has been having so many, like, spoofs and, like, you know, like, uh, hoaxes and all that, there's so much hype for this game that I am positive that will be announced. I do not think... Um, another Elder Scroll will be announced. I think maybe a Dishonored 2 will be announced. Fall mm-hmm. 4 is definitely, that's going to be the event, which I'm so fucking mad I don't live in goddamn California to go <laughs> or even just peek outside and lurk like a creeper. <laughs> free shit, but anyway. I, I have a mental picture of Catherine leaking, uh, lurking, lurking outside the event. Like, leaking? Leaking. <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> through the crowd. Sorry. No, oh, but uh, yeah. And uh, maybe Doom, but all I know is Fall yes. 4. Yes. Yes. Doom! Oh my god. Doom. I can't. That would be even. amazing. Yeah, uh, but Dishonored 2, another one is like, Dishonored, the first one was my one of my favorite games I'd played in a, in a while, and if they come out with a Dishonored 2, I'll be uh, so excited. So, yes. Sweet. That was happy. A lot of cool possibilities for that, seriously. Oh, yes. I'm not. So, so many gaming goodies. I'm going to skip out on work or school, whatever I'm doing at that moment. <laughs> We're actually thinking about live, like, 
science fiction 3000 sort of style commenting on the streams of the events on e3 as they happen so that could be kind of interesting yeah um, that but with would, that, we definitely need to we need that. to do that i think it'd be funny cool. imagine just seeing catherine lose her shit live on camera <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> you'll just see like stuff flying <laughs> everywhere <laughs> left and right just <laughs> her bouncing off the walls that's all it'll be <laughs> oh um, god my question is, is where are they going to fit it in because cat and i have been to e3 and it's a tight wicked tight day like that monday before you were honest to god waiting in line sitting in seats going to wait in another line sitting in wow. seats, going to wait in another line like it's intense it's a long ass day it was to Where's the, the point where i think every conference was uh late by 30 minutes because people weren't done moving from one conference to another because they're far apart la downtown la is far and each each conference is in a different building right because they all have their own setups and all that jazz and they have to truck you from one joint to the other so yeah the i remember the xbox one we actually had to be there pretty early in the morning it wasn't so bad for us because we had gotten in the day before and we we're still technically on montreal time but you know by the end of the day i remember being at playstation they set you up in in a, on a on a parking lot in advance, and they feed you. They have like food trucks there, and they have wine. And I go up to the bar after all day of running from conference to conference and not really eating properly. And they're like, "What do you want to drink?" And I'm like, "I'll have, take some wine." And they're like, "We will you like a double?" And I'm like, "Yes." <laughs> so I come back with two yes, big please. jugs of wine for me and Cat. So we were well Jugs. on and had some food in us prior to going in. We met some really cool people too. Prior to going into uh, the PlayStation conference, where they did the big announcements, where they bet Xbox and all that kind of stuff. So after that, we were done, like tired, and we had to get up the next day to watch the Nintendo Direct. So I can't imagine where they're gonna fit another conference in. It's gonna be tight. Yeah, it's going to be a tight day. Fun day. Unless maybe they move it later in the week. That could be interesting, too, because everybody already has their big announcements out at that point. Right? It's just show floor stuff at that point. Uh, they, could, they could be big enough. It could be off-site, you know? Well, would they, do it, would they do it on the day before? That's yeah. usually the Monday, and then the show runs Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So would they do it on Sunday? I don't know. You don't want to step on the toes of another, of another conference because you're going to, like, have half the viewers, right? Yeah. There's also a limited amount of rooms in that so area. Is, yeah, that can accommodate all of us. A lot. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of people. It's to the point where, like, we got into Sony and Microsoft because they had the biggest venues, but Ubisoft sold oh. out within, like, within. we got the invite, answered within an hour, and they were like, sorry, we're already full because they had a smaller it's venue. Yeah. Still, we were too busy. Yeah. Yeah. It was honestly it was wild. All right. So that should be interesting. We're gonna watch out for that come June. Um now, let's go back to video games themselves and playing them and your experiences. And I wanna know guys, do you care about the difficulty of a game? Do you care if a game is too easy, too hard? Do you think people should be making games that are wicked hard? Um, there's been some uh, discussion, especially on Escapist magazine, about how difficult The Witcher 3 is going to be. Um, does that deter you from playing a game? Do you care? Do you see it more as a challenge? How do you feel? I think most games now have a difficulty setting. Because I started Witcher 2 and uh, <clears throat> my boyfriend was like, yeah, that game's really hard. So, you know, good luck. Mm -hmm. So I was like, okay, so I put it on easy, mm -hmm. and it's fucking easy on easy, like literally, it's too easy. Mm -hmm. But I think, I mean, Witcher's known to be hard, and there's, uh, I think it was a Dark Soul that's near impossible. Yeah. But, very hard. <laughs> yeah. But if you get to that point in a game, and you can't get past it, with all the games that are out there to play, do you keep trying, or do you just yes. drop it and move on? Well, it depends on each going. gamer's attitude, you know? I mean, if you like that type yeah. of game, you like the challenge, you'll stay at it for, like, days and weeks trying to get back. I mean, look at the Shovel Knight was super hard, mm -hmm. you know? But uh, if you like a game and you like that type of game, sure, you'll stick to it. If you're the kind of person who just wants to try the game, see for yourself how hard it is, you can't get past it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it depends on each person's attitude, you know? Personally, I'm not, like... See, for example, Witcher 3, I'm a huge fan. Mm -hmm. I cannot wait to play that game. Mm -hmm. But I'm not a huge fan of hard games like yeah. Dark Souls 2. But, like, mm. 
I'm faithful to the series, so there. I'm sure I'm going to try it out. I feel yeah. you there. I mean, like, I love trying everything, but the problem is, is I only have yeah. so many hours in a day, and review copies come left Yeah, and so what's, what's the giving up point, you know? I have no, I have no qualms with playing a game on easy. So I can get through it yeah. so I can experience it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then if I feel like I loved it that much, I want to go back and play it. That's when I turn on hard mode. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah, well, maybe it depends on the games, whether you mm -hmm. have to play on hard or not. Because, like, yeah. first-person shooters, I'll play on hard because I like first-person shooters. Yeah. But, like, we'll say, like, The Witcher, what you were saying before, or any game, like an RPG, I'll put it on easy. Mm. Because I want to enjoy the RPG elements of it. I want to. Yeah, be you want to enjoy player. like the story, the exactly. universe, the lore, and everything. But yeah. there's the people who go like there's the achievement hunters that then they want to get yeah. everything. So they want to do it on veteran. They want to do it on hard. And they want to mm. get all the stuff. You know. Yeah, my yeah. friend who he hundred percent Dragon Age Inquisition. He had to do it on Nightmare, and it took him hundred thirty two hours. Like, like, that's almost, proper hardcore. Yeah, so he was like, "Are you going to do that?" I'm like, "Fuck no!" <laughs> I don't have that time. I'm like, yeah, I'm time, time is the issue for a lot of I'm people. I'm gonna put too. it on normal and coast my way to the last <laughs> boss. Thank you. <laughs> There's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with putting it on normal, putting it on easy, whatever you feel comfortable yeah, with. Yeah, same for me. Like, like Kat said, if, like I want to enjoy the story, like an yeah. RPG game. I'm just gonna play it so I can get sucked into the universe exactly. and not throw my controller at the window of doing so. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I just want to remind everybody in chat that we are taking questions. So uh, feel free to throw them in the chat, and uh, our wonderful mods will help uh, throw them in our Google Docs so that we can uh, answer them in a few minutes. And don't forget that we are taking donations. We love your support. Please follow us, and if you get a chance, any little amount helps, because we do this out of the love and goodness of our own hearts. And for you guys, because we love you guys. Next topic... <laughs> All right, next topic. We're going to talk a little Star Wars. Oh, my God. Are you ready for this? <laughs> so, Star Wars Battlefront apparently is a prequel or going to set up the next Star Wars movie. Mm -hmm. How do you guys feel about that? Are you excited? I mean, like, Star Wars lore is all over the freaking place. It's yeah. actually near impossible okay, to keep track Star of everything. Star Wars lore is humongous. Yeah, yeah. Star it's Wars wild. is insane. Yeah. Mm hmm mm -hmm. Yeah, how do you feel about, uh, you know, prepping a movie experience by playing a game? That's a little different. I yeah. think it's a good idea, actually. It's, I mean, I don't know, more and more as games go on, uh, <clears throat> the lines between movies and video games are blurring. So mm -hmm. yeah. I guess this is more like a in-your-face definition of prepping for, like a movie and game blur. So I think it's a good idea. Yes. I'm you guys remember that uh, game, uh, oh, geez, Louise, Quantum Break? Is that the one that's coming out oh, on Xbox yes. where it's supposed to be, like, the TV show and the game? Or like yes. I fucking loved Alan Wake, and I'm so <laughs> excited for that game. So Defiance is like that, was like that. The game Defiance on PC. Oh, yeah? Yeah, there yeah. Was, uh, the, it came out, and it was like, it's an MMO shooter on PC. Yeah. The game was pretty meh, but apparently the, the show was pretty yeah. good. And, like, whatever the gamers were doing in the game, it would affect what was happening on in the show. So mm. I thought that was that's pretty cool. Mm. I imagine that there's a lot of coordination to be able to do that, right? Yeah, for sure. You have to. It's. I mean, it, it must be crazy because you you want to film everything in advance, but then you have to wait for the people to do something online. So I don't know. It's, it's kind of weird. Mm. Yeah, but we live in a world, like, from, from a marketing perspective, we live in a world where everything... Cross marketing is a thing, right? Yeah, it's it's, it's totally it's a thing. I mean, we're in 2015 right now. That's it's all there is. I mean, look at uh, look at Shield. Yeah, yeah, it's a job. Uh, look at Shield tying in with like uh, the Avengers universe, tying in with all the Marvel universe. I mean, they're gonna start tying together all the different uh, all the different DC shows. Mm -hmm. So it just it just makes sense where we're at. The video games will start tying in with movies. I mean, there's no yeah. there's no point why it should not happen. Mm -hmm. Not well, that you know, Battlefront type. Well, exactly, especially big franchise like Star Wars, where you have, you know, let's yeah. face it, a lot of people who enjoy Star Wars enjoy video games. So it, it, it would make sense that they would want to tie in all those things together. And I, th I honestly think, nice, nice sweater. <laughs> right? I'm showing the R2-D2 hype. Nice! Wait, wait. Is it zip up? You can, yeah, it's like a uh, zip up. Uh, <laughs> right? I won't zip it up, though. That is really cool. I know, my boyfriend threw that at me. He's like, do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, uh, well, you know what, what I read was that yeah, the the, the Battlefront game will span. I, I don't think you're actually gonna play the characters from Episode Four, Five, and Six, 
but mm. the game was gonna span the years of four or five well episodes four five and six and then when you get to the end of battlefront you're actually gonna well the single player game you're actually gonna move a bit into the future and that's gonna tie in with the movie so i think it's really smart um i wonder if they're gonna pull it off I wonder if they're going to do a good job. They're probably going to piss off a lot of people. A lot of people are probably going to be pissed off at the new Star Wars movies. I mean, heck. We got that casting the other day. Probably. Yeah. I don't remember the gentleman's name. I just remember seeing his so picture many, and being like. The, there's so many people that like that series and that like this. That of course, people are going to be pissed off at one at some point. At something that's not going to be right. So. Mm-hmm. Like I, th- I think it's Mark Hamill who 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 came out and he said, "Look, guys, it's just a movie. Calm your shit. It's mm. just a movie, you know." Yeah, that ain't gonna happen. Come yeah. on, you're always gonna Too piss much somebody base. off. Yeah, no, it's pretty but... crazy. <laughs> <sighs> we we <laughs> don't hurt yourself. <laughs> you're gonna zip up your face. I didn't even notice. Those <laughs> Everybody <laughs> in the chat is losing their shit. Though. I know. But yeah. And chat Chat's keeps saying crazy. zip it up. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I agree though. Mm, well, I sure. mean, I, Domahal yeah. Gleason, that's the gentleman's name. Uh, Allie just put. Oh, the Irish dude. Yeah, he looks like Irish Mark dude. Hamill. That's going to be good. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I think it's I'm, be good. I'm not a big Star Wars fan, but I'm excited to see the new movies. A- any science fiction that is as big as it, it's supposed to be is going to be good for me and good for the, 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 the science fiction lovers. So I'm excited for that. Mm. Are you one of the people who's mad at like the new lightsaber or no? No. no. <laughs> it's fucking cool. It's a T. <laughs> it's like, so yeah, fucking it's cool. It's coming out of the side. What are they doing? It's Is so it? fucking it's cool. It's like a slice off your own hand. I mean. Uh, yeah. Hello. Well, I mean, it's <laughs> that, little, little yeah. baby oh. sabers. Need to happen. Just saying. I'm accident prone. I walk into walls on a daily basis. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't handle a lightsaber. You just no, cancel no, that right away. No. No, any weapon like that, like I'll do a BB gun and a twenty two, and that's like out in the woods, and that's it. No other weapon. I'll <laughs> handle them. Um, we got a few questions from the chat. Sure. Uh, first one comes from Craig. He wants to know if you've ever rage thrown a controller. Hell's no, that shit's too expensive. Oh, my have. brother has broken so many of my Dual Shock threes. He actually broke my PS two. Yeah, he broke my PS two and had to replace it for me. Wow. Mm. Okay, see, I've never gone that far. I've does the Wii, Does the Wii count? Uh, like, does the Wii count with, you know, the strap? Remote? <laughs> yeah. Funny story. Right? So my dad's a doctor. <laughs> my dad's a doctor. It's Christmas morning. Uh-oh. And he's on call. And he looks at his phone, at his beeper, and he calls in. And he starts answer, listening to it. And he starts to giggle. And I'm like, what? He gets on the phone. He's like, I have to go in. Someone broke their thumb playing Wii. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> like, that's awesome. <laughs> That's, well, I'm gonna tell that story one day. People get a kick out of it. Well, you know, um, it's 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 very intensive, and you move a lot around. I can see, yeah, you know, there's I've seen how many videos of their people fucking yeah. out their televisions, yeah, playing uh, the Wii. I, I mean, would cry. I'm always super careful. Yeah. Just a note for those coming over for the uh, my birthday celebrations. I'm very very making sure that everybody wears the strap because I love my TV and I don't want to see any Wiimotes in it. <laughs> Wear the strap. I agree. Yeah. Wear the strap. Safety <laughs> first, people. Car- uh, Katy Perry taught us. Yeah, even she wears the say, Just like <laughs> Katy Perry. <laughs> first, okay. <laughs> we get another question from. Uh, oh my goodness, I am. Okay, disclaimer, I am terrible at pronouncing names, and the Twitch names are even worse. The only Ilio, I think, that sounds about right, um, it's a hard one. And uh, they want to know, is there any place for innovation in MOBAs? Battleborn sort of says it will, but dot dot dot. Now, I'm not, I'm not super familiar with m- MOBAs. Um, mm. Do we have any folks in the chat who are? I don't like. I don't play a lot. I mean, I know what they are. My my boyfriend plays a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there is. I mean, I've just recently been watching. He's like he's a huge League of Legends player. Player, uh, but then like lately he's been playing Heroes of the Storm, which people argue is pretty much the same thing, right? Mm-hmm. But I I do like for someone who doesn't play it, I still see those differences in the games, and I do see innovation how Heroes of the Storm is looking better than League of Legends, mm. you know? Yeah. So I think there is room for innovation. I mean, look at, uh, what's it called? The one's coming out on Xbox soon. Uh, Smite. Uh, Smite. Smite. That's it. I mean, same thing. I mean, typical same elements, but different, you know? Mm-hmm. 
So well, I think there is room for this, yeah. yeah, but exactly. Like the, the same question can be asked for any shooter. Like Absolutely. Y- you have mm-hmm. your Halos, which is a type. You have your Call of Duty, which is a type. You have your Counter Strike, which is another type. And it's it's yes, it's all a first person shooter, but it's all it all works differently. All the mechanics are different, and the yeah. items and whatever are different. So of course, there's always room for improvement and and how you want to present the game to your people. Of course, there is. I think I think the word innovation throws people off a lot because they want to see something totally radical. But yeah. that's never going to happen. When we're talking, well, when we're talking games, we're talking any type of technology. Um, I think the more innovation when people say it, I think they think more along the lines of seeing what's out there and improving on it, taking something that's good and making it better. So mm-hmm. even though people like lose their minds when people change stuff, when the developers change stuff in Halo, um, it might actually be for the better in order to fix a bug or whatever. Mm-hmm. So I think we have to start looking at innovation in different ways rather mm-hmm. than, oh yeah. my God, you did something completely different. Because it's getting more and more difficult to create something that is. is totally new. Like mm-hmm. you can see it in music, you can see it in movies, you can see it in clothes, you can see it anywhere. It's getting more and more difficult because there's just so much shit already out there. And yeah. we yeah, but if, live in a vacuum. If you look at MOBAs, most of them are from like a top view horizontal type play. I mean, there's yeah. still the possibility of, of integrating verticality into there. I mean, uh, first the person. Yeah. yeah, first person, uh, third person, overview. I mean, that's that's not Can changing the gameplay itself, but yeah, I mean, you're changing, you're changing the view. But it does change how you perceive the game and how you deal with your interaction. Right? Absolutely. I mean, they could have a mobile where they just take away the map, you know? Yeah. Mm. Take away the map and see how, how players play then. Yeah. And I there's, mean, there's possibilities to make it different to make your make your little spot in and, MOBAs. Yeah, and sometimes just changing little things actually have a detrimental effect. So just because it hasn't come out doesn't mean they haven't tried it. Yeah, <laughs> they might have tried it. It sucked. They yeah. didn't want to give it to you, so they said no. <laughs> if they have good Q and A, that's not gonna happen. So. Yeah, exactly, exactly. All right, next question comes from Destiny is best. Beast. 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 Yeah, this is me not reading. The wine's getting to me. Um, don't know what kind of questions we can ask. You can ask pretty well anything. <laughs> Unless, if we if we don't answer, it's because we didn't like it. Uh, but, if you could have any power from a video game, what power would you have? The power to manipulate a weapon. <laughs> we can do that now. But no, seriously, what, what kind of weapon? The weapons uh, are endless. I don't know. I don't know. I really liked the neon, oh. um, the neon power in uh, Infamous Second Son. Like mm. I would like that because I have a real thing for like bright colors and lights and stuff, and to be able to run that fast and go up and down stuff and have a pretty trail of lights behind me, that seems right up my alley. But that's just vanity. <laughs> 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 How about you guys? If you could have any uh, power, what would you? Honestly, do? I'm kind of lazy, so any sort of like. Throw so like a Nisa's shit that I can move stuff in my mind <laughs> would be the best. Like, I want this thing, and here I have it now. So, yeah. Come to me! Yeah, like all yeah. Jedi powers, that kind of stuff. Use the controller change. with your mind, you know? That is 100 well, of course. Yeah, That's you can just like sit down and like, just yeah, like, I'm like, you. Go, uh-huh. go kill that dragon for me. Yup. 100%. <laughs> oh, that's a good question. It How is you- a good question. There's just so many. It's- I want to be a Spartan. You want to be a Spartan? I love John 117, but I'd be like Cat 117. Or I don't know. It'd be really sweaty in that suit, don't you think? I mean, oh, it has its own power system, I'm sure. Oh, like, this, sure. Is, this is prior to the fall of, like, this is like before Master Chief is the last Spartan around, like, like when the army of Spartans was everywhere. I'd want to be like the chick Spartan, run fast, <laughs> jump high as fuck. Like, no. Sounds okay. cool. Cat <laughs> SD, you're pretty quiet down there. What do you want to do? Um, I would like. It's not necessarily superpower, but a set of skills. Okay. Uh, a bit like all the roguish characters, like in Thief and Assassin's Creed and Dishonored. Mm-hmm. I play the same kind of character in Skyrim and Dragon Age. I just want to be a really, really sneaky rogue that's really fast, can like sneak up shit, climb shit, and then just kill people with one arrow in the eye. <laughs> Not the knee. <laughs> not the knee. Not the knee. That could be a power, like really good aim, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's Hawkeye. just like Hawkeye. It's just super, power. super human roguish abilities. Mm. Just like yeah. roll a natural 18 there and just crit <laughs> every roll after <laughs> for D&D terms there. Yay, uh, D&D. Nice. <laughs> oh, my. 
my. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. So, Becky, you're the only one that hasn't really responded. What What do you want? Is Come on. Superpower. The, the pressure is on Becky, now. Video game superpower. I'm going invisible. I mean, just imagine the amount of things. I mean, come on. Come I on. Know. Wouldn't that be awesome? Invisible sounds pretty good. I mean, I don't have, like, a specific character in mind, but, you know, same thing, like, uh... Like, like Kat was saying, you know, the rogue type characters, get a cloak, get a Harry Potter cloak thing going on. I don't have a specific game in mind. No, but invisibility is uh, something that comes up in a lot of games, so. Oh my god, it's so creepy. Mmm. <laughs> Creepastic. Creepy. I just keep thinking about that joke with the invisible guy and Wonder Woman and Superman and, yeah, anyways. <laughs> another... um, the Pixel Bot is actually asking us about the... Peter Monalu? Mon- How do you pronounce his last name, guys? Come on. How do you pronounce his name? The Isn't dude, the goddess, the goddess debacle. Peter Maliner? Yeah. Oh, the, uh, <laughs> I know. Oh, I feel. I have mixed feelings about that. I find the man's a genius. He's a genius. Creative genius, but. Creative I mean, people are not always the people who should be making the monitor. No, decisions. yeah. He's a visionary. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he has great ideas. He has. He can make things. Well, no, that's the thing. He can't make things. He could think of things to make. <laughs> promise things. He can try. He can try and fail miserably. But you know what? I, I've been I've been reading a lot of his interviews and stuff, and he's owning up to his mistake. He's not trying to like I didn't do this or this is what happens. This is a cr-. no. He's actually being like I fucked up, and so I have a lot of respect for him in that sense. Yeah. But I mean, he's got to stop doing this because like it's unfair. People, you know. Back to his Kickstarter, you know, that poor 18-year-old that put the finger on the last block was supposed to be god of all gods, you know, 1% of the profits of Godus was supposed to go to him, and it's not going to him, you know what I mean? So it's, it's, the, it's If the bad. kid had been smart, though, he would have had a document signed, just saying. I mean, we yeah. know how we run contests here in Quebec, <laughs> so particular they are. Sign it! And, you know, like, I guess this is the problem with any of these, like, Indiegogo, Kickstarter, whatever... You can throw money at something. It doesn't mean you're going to see the return, right? It's terrible, but, you know, it. that's just the way it is, and you're kind of gambling. It's but business, you know? I mean, you don't a lot know. of people have their own money in this kind of thing as well. Mm. And as much as somebody is a, you know, revolutionary and a thinker and all this kind of stuff, it doesn't know, mean that they know industry and they know how trends are going to go and they know yeah, how to exactly. deal with money or how to, you know, uh-huh. write up a contract. Um, next question. For all five of us, what is the next game you're most hyped about? So, who wants to play <laughs> what coming this year? Or next year? Or whatever? Uh, let's start with you, Becky. What do you want to play? I'm really hyped for Witcher 3. Yeah? Very mm-hmm. hyped for Witcher 3, but I must admit that since I played the Hardline beta, mm-hmm. I'm very hyped for Battlefield Hardline. Yeah? I, I it's miss fun, me some but... Uh... I like it. You gotta, you gotta have like your gang of go-to... Battlefieldians, though. I mean, yeah. is that what they're going to become now? Battlefieldians? Are we coining that? It's a new thing. Yeah, yeah. We're coining that. That was coined here. <laughs> Girls on games. Yes. Right. <laughs> I don't know. I, I I play the beta and it's fun, but like I said, I hate that they're putting everything again behind. You have to get money to buy the guns to be better. You like, don't. That's the thing. I disagree. I mean, it depends what kind of first person shooter gamer you are. I mean, you can. You can be the typical gamer who puts the time that you need to unlock these things, or you can unlock it from the bat and skip all the fun. You know, it's not it's not a pay to win type thing. I no, I no, no, no. no I'm sorry. With, right? I'm, uh, I meant no. I, I I meant what I meant is that like I read up and like straight up the M16 best rifle, and so whatever you're playing M16. But to play with the M16, you have to buy it with in-game money at hmm, fifty thousand dollars. So yeah. which it's okay. I admit it. It's not that long to get that money. If that's if that you're going with that straight away, maybe it's four or five hours of gameplay. Then you have your money. But still, I find it stupid that you have to pay money to be able to get the same the same gun, the best gun in the game. And that's my problem also with games like Call of Duty, where <laughs> you start with you nothing. You have nothing. You, yeah. With a stupid fucking gun, mm-hmm. you can't kill anybody and you can't do mm-hmm. shit. So it's kind of <laughs> it's hard when you start yeah. playing the game because. Like, you have to get in with everybody and try to follow and see what's up, but then it just, like, I don't know. I, I, I just, I'm having a hard time with that concept of unlocking as you play the game. Just give me everything, I'll choose what I want to play with, and then I want to have fun. But isn't mm-hmm. that the point of many games, like, to unlock it as you go? Like, mm-hmm. uh, 
Well, it's just it's just that much more satisfying when you finally get to that point where you've unlocked it definitely, and you're uh, like, okay, it's know. mine. When you get there, it's like I've been accumulating mm. for like three days now to buy this like three hundred thousand dollar gun. I can finally pick it up. You're like, yes, you know. Mm. Well, so there's that there's that aspect too, you know. Yeah, I guess uh. so. But I don't know. I guess you know, if if I'm gonna buy a game, I want to be able to enjoy it right away. Not all right. I gotta grind for four hours before I actually get to enjoy the game. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But I guess, um, yeah. like, no, because what Becky was just saying about the um, the thing in Simon. See, I guess that's why I'm more partial to the Halo series. That's why Halo is my ultimate first-person shooter, because everyone starts off with the same mm -hmm. guns. You know what I mean? Yeah. So the battleground is equal. Their spawn points, except for in Halo 4 when they brought out that Call of Duty shit. But anyways, uh, <laughs> their spawn points for, like, you know, the power weapons and stuff. And you have to battle to get there to get it to be better. And everyone else. And see, for me, that is my type of first-person shooter. Mm -hmm. Speaking of that, oh. Redrum says that his uh, his most anticipated upcoming game that he's hyped for is Halo 5. Is oh, that yours? like me. Of course yeah. not. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. After the beta. Um, yes. Pixabot, <laughs> the Pixabot is excited to see Rise of the Tomb Raider. Um, yes. Let's see what else have we got there. Borderland I'm, resequel. Yeah. I'm yeah, super thorn between uh, Overwatch <laughs> And oh, yeah. the new Why Blizzard not? game, and well, used to call the be called or whatever Blizzard it's going to be called. Yeah, yeah, whatever it's going to be now. <laughs> well, and yeah, um, right, I forgot about that. And Deus Ex Universe, I'm really excited about that too. They're going to show it at GDC, uh, in in, in the coming uh, in the coming weeks. They're going to show uh, the first footage of Deus Ex Universe. So I'm really fucking excited to see that. That's pretty cool. I love those games. Mm. Yeah, Catherine, SD, what are you excited to play? Do I really need to say it? Starts with a Z, end with an Elda. Yeah. <laughs> Some sort of Nintendo thing or an Assassin's Creed, one or the other. Yeah. Well, I don't need to be hyped for Assassin's Creed because it's going to come out in November of next year, like they always do. As in <laughs> Zelda. It's like, a, it's like something you can trust, you know? Yeah. It's your fallback game. Yeah, it's like my mom knitting me hats. But just wait, it's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know when, but it's going to happen. Uh, oh, my, that's no, funny. but I'm excited for the Zelda HD yeah. because we've been waiting for like an ocarina kind of game. Not in the sense of the gameplay, but in the sense of like taking the series and rebooting it and giving it new life and using Zelda to like explore what the new console can do. Mm. Yeah. And I think Zelda HD is about three years too late for the Wii U. Yeah, mm. seriously. Yeah. yeah. To be honest, well, like, a lot of stuff is too late on the Wii U. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I love the fact that I just got to play Majora's Mask and fell in love with it. But at the same yeah. time, it's a 15-year-old game. Give me something freaking new already. <laughs> yeah. since, since I got the Wii U, I played uh, I played Twilight Princess, mm -hmm. Wind Waker HD. Mm -hmm. The next one on the list is Skyward Sword, and like, let's which one of this these is an actual Wii U release? <laughs> Not yes. none. One. None. Well, it's Skyward Wall. <laughs> Zero. There's HD, one remake, one and the other two are Wii games I'm playing with yeah. the... Because the Wii U is retro-compatible. Mm -hmm. Right. So I'm just like, you, you need... I think they're going to need that. And I think I'm hoping it's either going to do what Ocarina of Time did for the genre and for the console, or it's going to fail so badly. What do you it's think cool of the when they rumors? re-release like these games that we love, but give us something other than re-releases. Yeah, yeah for a time. Yeah. Well, like, throw what us else are you on? What do you think but, of the rumor that um, the Zelda HD, the story, is going to be a link to the past remade in, on the Wii U? That yeah, that would be very very dis. That would be. I don't know. I'd love to play it again in a different context, but. Come on. Yeah. You've got some of the most brilliant video game developers, creators, story writers at Nintendo. Fucking make something new. Yeah, I mean, do it. <laughs> a Link Between Worlds was amazing. So good. Yeah, that was, and it was that's how you do it. That's and it was a link to the past. It was in the storyline. Mm -hmm. yeah. They went with what people love. They added a few things. And yeah, a lot of people were like... Name. Yeah, and there are a lot of people were like, yeah, you're going to be a drawing on the wall. What's that going to give you? They added awesome mechanics with yeah. that. Awesome puzzle solving. It was actually much harder than I thought it would be. Yeah. And it was crazy. Like, you, you had to collect these little, these little dudes, and one of them was sucked to a wall. And for 10 minutes, I couldn't get the guy. I was, like, trying to pull on it. I put a bomb. And it took me 10 minutes to remember 
I can get a draw- become a drawing, get on the wall, get behind the dude, and then pop out and pop him out with me. Mm-hmm. I couldn't think about it because it was too new. It's something so different completely. They have the potential to do something great without having to redo everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just the concept of having every single temple open to you at the get-go yeah, and was then so just revolutionary. Go. Like, that's nothing that we had ever seen before, like, that yeah. you don't have to follow a path. You can actually go buy whatever tool you need mm-hmm. and go mm-hmm. for it, right? That was really cool, and you learned really well, really quickly, like, don't go buy everything, because if you die, you lose it all. Yeah. So, you know, that's an interesting uh, twist, you know, and they have the potential to do something new. Just freaking do it already and give it to us and, and make it us stop fun. bitching. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. an un, it wasn't a patronizing game. It was really like, and I remember the two of us talking about on lunch, and you were, you were stuck in a dungeon. And like, how did you do this? And I was like, well, I did the other temple before, so I had my boomerang, so I used my boomerang to do this. And you're like, I don't have the boomerang. I didn't boomerang. buy it because I didn't think I needed it. And yeah. I was like, well, I still I didn't die since the last temple, so I still have it, so I could do yeah. that. And yeah. It was actually kind of interesting having those conversations yeah, over lunch, true. being like, how did you do this? How did you do this? Like, yeah. I'm stuck here, and you're like, well, I did something else, and I did something else first. Yeah. And yeah. it was just a different way because you can't really – follow the game on the same sense as like you know oh you're at this mission already well i don't want to spoil anything for you you know like it it mixes up how you have a conversation about a game so that was kind of cool well it, yeah, i get like, the impression that 3ds is getting the better end of nintendo deals lately yeah oh, am i the yes. only one that gets that impression i mean no, they're no, getting no, all the new correct, stuff correct. and all the good series you know next correct one. but you know want to know why is because their focus is, is Japan and not the Western yeah, market, yeah. right? And in Japan, community a and having personal, of DSs. Yeah. Like, we think it might be a little crazy to ha- put out a new Nintendo 3DS. Well, in Japan, it's not. Oh, yeah. It's like... Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's a very specific market here in North America where, like, Sony and Xbox are fighting and Nintendo's just, like, trailing behind. If you look in the rest of the world, it's like Sony and Nintendo are kings and Microsoft is just like... Hey, we, yeah. we 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 have a new console. <laughs> but y'all want to play Halo? Yeah. Come on, y'all, y'all want to play Halo? Y'all play Halo? How about Tomb Raider? Tomb Raider? Oh wait, you have a PlayStation. You got to wait a year, but that's okay because you yeah. got a Charted Four in the meantime. Yeah. Have fun. Have fun. <laughs> Enjoy. Exactly. Mm. I have to say, um, and it's something that's I know everybody's going to say Batman's my anticipated, but yes, it is. But I'm actually really excited to go play Yoshi's Woolly World because I love Yoshi and mm. I like the fact that it all looks like plushy yarn. <laughs> like that looks really intriguing <laughs> to me. And I wasn't, I loved Yoshi's story. Um, on the, oh my God. You know? yeah, and I wasn't super impressed with the Yoshi's Island 2. Like I found that they kind of missed the boat on the drawing style. The 3DS was, games? Yeah. Yeah, yeah it wasn't, wasn't good. I don't like it. Uh, I wasn't... It was all right. I mean, it was good yeah. fun, but it was a little easy. And it, I felt like their art direction was, like, in three different places at once. Yeah. But I'm really... Everything I've seen about Yoshi's Woolly World looks gorgeous. Didn't they do a yeah. Kirby's Woolly World type thing? Kirby's Epic Yarn. Yeah, yeah. Epic they, they, Yarn, they, they, yeah. That was, that, that, I actually had to look it up yeah. and make sure I had the right name because <laughs> they're all so damn close. But, like, if you look at some of the screenshots, I got one pulled up, and, like... That like plushy looking texture, like that makes me happy. Makes if, me just yeah. 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 If, <laughs> if the so Yoshi totally game, the yarn, you know, Yoshi, I'll be ever yeah. in your. If thing. the Yoshi game is anything like her, like Kirby Epic Yarn, like the game was super easy, but it was ridiculously fun and felt so good and. Like, you're all just so happy and smiling and playing the game. And, oh, it's all good. That's what, that's what was Nintendo really cool. was all about, right? Yeah, Nintendo's exactly. Nintendo's going to give yeah. you that game that gives you, like, the little, like, heart pulls on the heartstrings yeah. and makes yeah. you feel all squishy and happy. And then you're going to go play something, like, intense and dark. And you're going to be, like, yelling at the screen <laughs> yeah. or, like, that cowering one. in terror because <laughs> PT is freaking you out. Like, oh, God. Oh, we live in good times. Oh, Sorry. speaking of pulling the heartstrings, <laughs> I have another one. Ori oh. the Blind Forest. <gasps> yes. That looks so yeah. good. My name oh, is on the list for that. Mm, I'm that looks good. Are you? It's yeah. So uh, I can't wait to play that. That's, that's a day. That's a day Xbox, one for me. Xbox are nice people. Our mm-hmm. buddy Robert at my Xbox. Really? Mm-hmm. He's a nice. He's a very nice gentleman. <laughs> <laughs> he's a very nice gentleman. He loves us very much, and we wink, love him. Wink, wink. Can't wait for that game. Yeah. It looks yeah. so beautiful, but then same time, it's the kind of game. It's a game, you know, it comes around once in a while. You just you're watching it, and you know it's gonna make you cry at some yeah. point. And you're like, I need to cry. Yeah. Well, did, play you play, did you play Valiant Hearts? <laughs> I love that game. That I one. That one's like another baby. Picture, 
yeah. like a baby. Yeah, I play. I finished that one during the the extra live stream actually. Oh yeah. Oh, were you falling on screen? I was like, oh my god. I had a tear again, but I, you know, it's, I'm not crying. I'm not crying. Like, I'm not crying. Oh, I'm crying. Oh, I'm crying. <laughs> Yeah. All right. I think we're coming to the end of the podcast. Unless anybody got anything else to talk about, any other questions from chat, I'll leave it for a second um, to let you guys know um, that we actually have a special broadcast happening on Thursday night. Um, not sure what time yet. Probably around the eight o'clock hour. I'm going to be Twitch streaming The Order 1886 before nice. release. So, so if you're sick. interested in that game, um, come check it out. We'll be broadcasting that. Um, also next week, of course, our podcast is going to be back to its regular, regular schedule. And if you feel like you want to come party, uh, on the 27th of February, it happens to be my birthday and I'm having a party with everybody. We're going to be Twitch mm -hmm. streaming us playing video games, getting drunk, Drinking. eating pizza, <laughs> being ridiculous mm -hmm. on a Friday night. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I didn't see any more questions. So... Hi. I was quick, but no. Clean slate. Um, yeah, so I want to thank you all for coming and hanging out with us here this evening. I want to thank you guys in chat. It's been a lovely, lovely time. Thank you, Becky Snooze, for coming and hanging out with us. You need to do this with us more often. I would so love to start. Keep, keep your Mondays free, 8 p.m. Sounds okay. good. All right. The bachelor plays at 8 p.m. No, uh, <laughs> you can record that nonsense. That's why I could not watch it. I, I can't judge. <laughs> you know, we were talking about our guilty TV pleasures earlier, and yeah, I do yeah. watch Total Divas. Um, so yeah, everybody, if you want to learn more about Girls on Games, um, you can find us at girlsongames.ca, the Girls on Games on Twitter, Girls on Games on Instagram, and Girls on Games on Facebook. Becky, where can people find your lovely face? Uh, everywhere. No. Uh, <laughs> main place would be Twitter. I try to be as active on as possible. At snooze underscore game. I think you added it on the channel. Real ninja-like. That that's awesome. Ninja-like that. That's <laughs> Allie. Yeah, so at snooze underscore gaming on Twitter and Twitch. I am a live streamer first and foremost, so twitch.tv slash onyx underscore snooze a lot. You'll see me yapping it up in chat. Sweet. Well, yapping thank you so much, everybody, for joining thank us. Thank you. Um, thank you, guys. It's been a wonderful night. Join us next week at Monday night, 8 p.m. Same bat channel, because they corrected me that last time. <laughs> and, and this has been excellent. Have a great awesome. week and game lots. See you on Thursday. Ciao. Ciao, guys. Bye. Bye. It was fun.